So, you're heading to Japan, a land of sushi, land of high-speed floating magnetic trains, land of anime and weird stuff, home to Hiroshima where the first ever atomic bomb was dropped, and of course, home to the 2019 Rugby World Cup. If you're watching this in the future, comment down below who won that. Back in July, I spent two weeks in Japan with my little brother, and here are 20 things that we learned when we were there. 7-Eleven is the king of convenience stores in Japan. They're literally everywhere, they have free Wi-Fi, they have free ATM withdrawals. Nearly every single 7-Eleven has one of these and there's no fees from their side, only from your side. Most of them have clean toilets that you can use and they're free. There's amazing affordable food ready to go such as sushi and hot microwavable wraps which you can do in store. There's hot coffee, there's iced coffee, there's even hot coffee in a can sometimes. You can honestly live out of 7-Eleven in Japan and that's kind of what my brother and I did. People think Japan is expensive, but you know, you can just go into Family Mart, 7-Eleven. Beautiful sushi for about two euro 50 cent. What more do you want? Mm. And cafe latte for a euro. Family Mart and Lawson are equally as good convenience stores. However, I don't think they have free ATM withdrawals. So comment down below if I'm wrong. If you've been looking into visiting Japan, then the chances are you've come across the JR Pass or Japan Rail Pass. What is it? Well, basically it gives you unlimited rides on high-speed Shinkansen trains for a period of one, two or three weeks. Like a Sometimes other local services are included within the JR Pass. For example, in Hiroshima, the hop-on, hop-off tour bus, which goes all around the city, is included in the JR Pass. Also, the local train in Hiroshima is included, and the ferry to Miyajima Island. That is the shrine we came all the way to see. Should we just stay on the boat and go back now? However, there are a lot of exceptions to the JR Pass. For example, if you want to go anywhere around Mount Fuji, you will have to also pay a little bit extra for a local train because they're not included in the JR Pass. And there's actually many exceptions and you have to look it up online and type it in. Can I go here? Can I go there? Is it possible or not? Do I have to pay more? It's a little bit confusing, so it's worth doing some research. Now bear in mind, if you want to obtain a JR Pass, you must be visiting Japan as a tourist. If you're not a tourist, if you're there on a business visa, etc., you cannot get the JR Pass. And you have to make sure that when you enter Japan, they put a stamp in your passport for when you're picking up your JR Pass so you can prove that you're a tourist. If you don't have that stamp, even if you've already paid for it in advance online, they will not give it to you. If you want to buy a JR Pass, buy it online in advance before you come to Japan. You actually get a voucher that they send you and then you need to exchange it once you're in Japan. You can exchange it at any JR office such as the one at Tokyo Station. Now you can buy it in Japan only until the 31st of March 2021 and it costs at least 10% more in Japan, as my brother and I found out the hard way. Sickened. You think for the money you pay, they'd make you a nice card that fits in a wallet rather than this awkwardly oversized piece of paper that isn't easy to store without damaging. Perhaps they just want you to inject more money into their economy by buying something to keep it safe. Using it is even more annoying. You're not allowed to go through the turnstiles. You have to go over to the side, show it to a member of staff, and they wave you through into the railway waiting area, whatever you want to call it. But it didn't take long before my brother and I realized that they don't even look at it. So we're about to walk into Nijo Station with the JR Pass. I've got it right here. But to show you how loose it is, I'm going to show it the wrong way around. Did you want When using the metro in various cities, it might make sense to get a metro value ticket. You can buy these on the machines in almost any station, you know, a one day pass, two day pass, three day pass, etc. However, some hostels and hotels, etc., sell another pass that's even cheaper than the ones available inside the metro station. So make sure to ask wherever you're staying do they sell metro value tickets? Because you could end up saving a few quid. Make sure to ask locals if there's anything going on. Search on the web. We came across this goldfish festival, courtesy of my brother, because he's in the fish. Uh, we went there, it was a little bit kind of out of Tokyo, and we were the only 
foreigners there. So it was really authentic experience. And then another day when we were wandering around, we came across some sort of a celebration on the street with lights and drums, music and dancing. And that was really cool. So make sure to check out what's going on. There are over 5 million vending machines in Japan. That's more vending machines in Japan than there are people in the Republic of Ireland. It's one vending machine for every 23 people in Japan and it won't take you long before you notice this when you arrive. They're all over the place on street corners, on the side of the road and they sell almost anything, albeit most of them just sell drinks and snacks. It won't be long before you end up using one so make sure to have some cash because I learned the hard way. My foreign card wouldn't work, and I looked like an idiot. They love anime in Japan, and you're definitely gonna come across it, especially in areas such as Akibata, where you will see hundreds of women lining the streets dressed in typical anime-style clothes, normally working, handing out flyers, or trying to get you to come into a shop or a bar for a look, and you can even in some places build your own dream woman which in my personal opinion was very creepy <laughs> just play a video game on the side of the street arcades normally come hand in hand with anime and are very popular especially these places i'm still not sure what's going on all i can say is that they are extremely noisy there is a thick layer of cigarette smoke flowing around and it is some form of gambling whilst at the same time playing a game. If you love throwing your money away then you can try your best to win a Pikachu too. Bowing is a normal way of greeting, thanking, apologizing etc. Now Japanese don't typically expect foreigners to know about bowing etiquette but there's no harm knowing it and the deeper a bow, the more respect that has been shown. Shoes should always be removed before entering someone's home and if you've traveled around Asia before, this shouldn't be new to you, it's quite common practice. Refrain from having loud conversations on your phone in public places such as on the train or the metro or the bus, it is considered extremely rude. I wish this was common practice everywhere in the world but I mean if you go to China it's almost like the opposite of this where whoever can speak the loudest wins. Slurping your noodles is not only considered good manners, it's also a way to taste every little detail of flavor in your dish. Crossing the road without the little green man is an absolute no-no in Japan and you'll often see people standing on very small crossings where the road is only tiny, there's nothing coming and they're just standing there waiting for the little green man. Eating and drinking while walking around is considered very strange, I'm not really sure why but you're supposed to at least stop if you want to eat something or sit down, same goes for drinking, even water. However, I must admit, the latter two rules my brother and I broke religiously. Sorry, Japan. There are two prices for everything inside the shops in Japan. That is because the lower one is the price without tax and the higher one is the price that you're actually going to pay at the till with the tax included. Furthermore, most restaurants will add the tax on top of the price that you're looking at. So if you want to know exactly how much you're going to be paying, make sure to ask in advance to avoid any confusion whatsoever. As a tourist, you're actually exempt from tax. I'm not sure exactly how it works, especially with the lower cost items such as food uh, and snacks in 7-Eleven, etc. But I bought a case for my GoPro before we flew to the Philippines after Japan and as long as I had my passport on me, I showed my passport in the shop, I was exempt from the tax on that item. So if you're buying something more expensive, bring your passport, you won't have to pay tax. <laughs> Japan is a country of 127 million people, so be prepared and expect big crowds and to have your personal space minimized. There are plenty of places you should not miss if you go to Japan, however, one of them has to be Nara. Make sure to go here, there are wild deer living side by side with all the humans and the tourists. There are thousands of them, they're wandering around the streets and they do not care about the presence of humans at all. It's really bizarre to see. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it at all because it's kind of not really my thing to be honest, but I loved it and it was probably the highlight of Japan for my brother Rob and I. They even have learned to obey the traffic lights, which is kind of funny. Fair play to the deer, They're waiting. they've waited for the green man. 
and they're gonna go for it. Come on, boys, it's safe. I have to ask you to keep on moving. Thank you. Come along now. Well done, well done. Of all the incredible food Japan has to offer, do not miss okonomiyaki. Apparently there's two styles, there's Hiroshima style and there's Osaka style. My brother and I only tried Hiroshima style and it was incredible. It's basically an explosion of ingredients cooked right before your eyes. If you're in Hiroshima, make sure to find the Okonomi Miura, which is a building full of okonomiyaki restaurants. Japan is no joke when it comes to earthquakes. The country sits on the boundaries of four tectonic plates, making it one of the most earthquake prone countries in the world. And there's already been a number of disastrous earthquakes in the past. Japan has been leading the way in designing earthquake proof structures and technologies. However, if you're visiting Japan, it is very important to educate yourself on earthquake safety procedures, just in case you're caught in the middle of one. Ready? Ready? <laughs> The weather in Asia can change rapidly and Japan is no exception to this. Try your best to avoid visiting Japan within the rainy season if you want to stay dry. Now, if you're visiting in the rainy season, that's when I was there. It was dry, I would say, most of the time. This really depends on when you visit and how lucky you get. But it also did rain a lot. However, that didn't get in the way. We got on with it and we had fun. Oh, isn't it just the look of the Irish? We've gotten off the train. We're gonna get the ferry. The rain is out in full force again. Every railway station, or at least every one that I've been in so far, there is tourist information center. They can give you information on all the trains and tourist information on what to do in the city that you're in. This lady, for example, was not only incredibly helpful, but really wanted to visit Ireland and learn Irish dancing, so we gave her a bit of a lesson. Do the Irish dance. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There are lockers in all railway stations across Japan and they are extremely handy. There's different sizes. This one costs 600 yen and you can leave your stuff into it, in it for up to three days. So he's putting his bag in and I'm also putting my bag in because we can both get both our bags in this one, save ourselves a bit of money rather than getting one each, small one each. So if it's Robbie's bag, if it's my big bag, I put my laptop in because I don't want to be carrying it around in my camera bag. I put two umbrellas in, lock. Please insert the usage fee. Be sure to get your receipt, which is required when you take out your baggage. There is free drinking water fountains spread all across Japan where you can fill up your water bottle or just have a drink. And you can save a lot of money if you do this, obviously on bottled water. Just bring your bottle and keep refilling it. And they're also really, really high powered. Not sure about what to eat? Don't worry, a lot of restaurants across Japan have synthetic versions of every single dish sitting outside the restaurant to give you a visual idea of how that dish is going to look when it comes out. You may have heard from someone that's been to Japan before about the toilets being incredible, and it's true. The toilets in Japan can literally do everything except pull your pants up and down. So. As long as you can pull your pants up and down, the toilets will look after the rest. Sometimes the seats are heated, sometimes there's a privacy mode where you can press a button and the toilet will make a lot of bubble noises to mask any noises that you're making. And the one thing they all have in common is the cleaning ability where the toilet will shoot a carefully streamlined beam of water at you with impeccable accuracy. I'm not gonna lie, the first time you use one of these is a bit scary because you're not really sure what's gonna happen. You're just sitting there, you're looking around, you're waiting for something to happen and all of a sudden... There are literally no bins, or should I say thrash cans for my American viewers, anywhere in Japan. It's so incredible how clean it is because you will be holding that rubbish for so long walking around looking for one and you'll probably eventually just give up and put it in your bag. Top tip, go into a convenience store, they have bins, but there's none outside on the street or at least they're very rare. So that was 20 things I learned when I visited Japan this year. I hope you found this video helpful if you're visiting Japan. If you've been to Japan and you're watching this video or if you're from Japan, comment down below. Did I miss anything? Did I get anything wrong? Let me know and I'll pin your comment if it's going to help others. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, 
Let me know what you thought down below. And if you're new, subscribe. Plenty of Japan videos on the way, among many others. Next up is actually North Korea. See you real, real soon. Good luck. Ha ha ha!